I thought this was supposed to be about chest hair grooming. Where? Take a video all together now because it should be fun. As long as my computer doesn't crash, I got the spinning, spinning di dial of uh, the rainbow dial, the spinning dial, the, the rainbow dial of death on the on the Mac. Oh, there he is. What's up? I'm wearing no shirt today because this is Hulk Hogan. This is I'm in total wrestling mode right now. I got the microphone in my hand. Woo! And we're feeling good about the market, right, guys? Now, people are wondering the last couple of days, how come the market's going up? I don't understand. I thought this was going to be a, a, a slow week. First of all, let's remind everybody out there that the market is complete bullshit, right? None of this is real, all right? That's why we're going up. That's why we go down. And every once in a while, the media likes to perpetrate a lie to us that there is a reason for us to be going down. Now, we've got about a thousand reasons we should be going down right now. All we're hearing about is the growth slowdown, which is fantastic because, you know what? The market doesn't care about earnings, so it does, doesn't matter. So there can't be a growth slowdown if there really is no real earnings anyway. All right, so let's take a step back. Why did the market bounce this week? Oh, I know why. Because two weeks ago, it looked like we were going to break down. So people were starting to add to their short positions. And once we started to go back up, they had to start covering. And then they added to it on that one moment of pause. And now that we didn't go down, they all have to frantically cover. And you got to understand, it's not earnings. It's not interest rates. It's not economic strife. It's not global unrest. Because let me tell you something. The reason we crashed in August was the China slowdown. Has anybody noticed China lately? How's it working out for them? It's not really working out too well. Yet our market seems to have bounced and has gone up pretty much every day in, other than the month of June, or sorry, the month of J January to start this year. And you know what that was? That was to keep us on our toes. The only reason the market goes down every once in a while is to keep us guessing. Right now, if you've got a stock that's not coal or something that's caused cancer or did something illegal, you got a good chance of making money in the market. And even that, buddy, our friend in the, in the chat room just brought up a stock called MyTech. MyTech, M-I-T-K. I haven't thought about this stock in years. I had a friend that got his ass kicked on this thing, got hammered all the way down to $2. $2. Guess what? It's at nine bucks now. Thanks for playing. If you sold it, wow. You basically can't sell anything without a good shot of regretting it within a month or two. And I understand SQ might not come back, or I'm sorry, Fitbit might not come back, or GoPro, but gotta think about it. These were one product, fad stocks, and you got caught up in a fad. That's that's common nature, that's, that's part of life, beyond the stock market. How often have you bought a pair of jeans that everybody liked and then you don't wanna wear the jeans anymore? Same kind of concept, right? You got a GoPro, it was a great camera, but your stock, you overpaid for it. You love those Shake Shack burgers, right? How's your stock doing in that? Oh, they were expanding all over the place, weren't they? Oh, you had to get into the Shake Shack. You had to get your, you had to get your Fitbit. And now they're investigating Fitbit, how their products don't work. Oh, really? Like you really needed that anyway. You don't need a Fitbit. You don't need an Apple Watch. And oh, I just want to give a sorry condolences for the people that were selling out of Apple because the growth story was over. The growth story is over at Apple. They're only the most powerful company in the world, them and Google and Facebook. Yeah, but you want to just dump their stock as it's going down. It's fantastic. You, you see, the reason that the Apple Watch doesn't matter is because the company, they can have an experiment. Oh, I'm sorry, Brody! Can't do a video without showing the dog now. Because even though I'm in a raging, ranting kind of mood because I'm not long the cues, and I hate when the cues go up without me, Right now, I'm in what is called a short strangle. I'm, I sold calls, I sold puts, and I was thinking that the market would stay in a range. But no! I'm thinking one... Ten days ago, I'm thinking, man, oh, man, shit, maybe I should get out of some of these naked puts in case the market goes down. But then, we suddenly break out. Well, why are we breaking out? I don't understand. I don't understand. Why are we breaking out? How could we be going up? What about all the economic data? The economic data. What? First of all, you guys trust the government? CIA, all that crap, right? We're, we've already learned not to trust the government for anything except to try to protect the borders and, you know, 
fight the terrorists in the other land. We, we, we owe them that. But do you think that the economic data that they report is viable? You're doing your background checks? You have an independent auditor of the United States government? You sure they're reporting good earn? Are you sure? Are you sure they're reporting the, the, the jobs numbers were, were accurate, you think? Oh. None of it's real, people. The only thing that's real is reversals, short squeezes, greed and fear. Why is FEYE going up? Why is FEYE going up? They had terrible earnings. Because the shorts couldn't get the stock to break back below 12 and a half. Right? Then they start to cover. The longs get encouraged because the stock stops going down. You see the volume increasing and then the stock starts to go up. There it is. That's the essence of it all. U.S. Steel. If the market, you know, I got another guy. I, I started to call this fella out. Again, I'm going to have to mention Fundamental Vinny again. Fundamental Vinny wanted a day trade on fundamentals. He likes to analyze the companies that he's trading. I was like, you know, if you tried to trade off fundamentals, in theory, the stock shouldn't even move. You know, think about it. U.S. Steel was $120 stock at one point. It was also $6. Which is it? Somewhere in the middle, maybe? But when U.S. Steel went from $6 to $21 in six weeks... Has the fundamentals changed that drastically that the market cap of a company like U.S. Steel should increase threefold? But you Come on! The market never None of this down. is real. Where? But you know what is real? Breakouts are real. People are loving the AMD. Well, I thought those chips were outdated. Well, I thought Intel was eating their lunch. Who gives a shit? The stock broke $3.99. Because if you're short AMD with that attitude that Intel rules the roost, guess what? You better have been covering at $399 because now the stock's at $450. And now if you're short and more, you're sitting there going, oh, shit, I hope I'm right about this. And then when the stock doesn't go down, you're going to be forced to cover. And then next thing you know, AMD's going to be $7. And then they're going to have a cross merger with Cisco and Pfizer. It's going to be an erectile dysfunctional buffering chip company. It's going to be great. I mean, Pfizer, Cisco, and, and AMD. And then FEYE is going to get bought up by Google, who's going to get bought up by Apple. And that's going to be all bought up by Tesla. You're going to have an electric, Apple-powered, cloud, whatever. And all the while, the Qs are going to go to 143, and the Dow's going up. I've also raised my targets on the Dow. I just want to make this a formal announcement. Wait, let me get my calculator out. According to my statistics, based on the fundamentals and the uh, hyperbole of the uh, of the uh, uh, of, of the situation, let me uh, and, and percentage this gain on the and uh, counting into the one thing. My new target on the Dow Jones for the year 2025. See, unlike other analysts, I give you a date, any year where I think it's going to happen. By the year 2021, which is now five years from now, my predictions are the Dow will be at what? 45,872? Sure! Why not? There you go. 40, 42,549, actually. It just got altered a little bit. I don't know what happened. Oh, because I've got this, you know, I've got this fancy calculator here. It's, it, 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 it takes in economic strife and, and the jobs report also into my calculations. Because that stuff matters, too. The jobs report. Do you know anybody that's unemployed? Do you? I do. I know three people that have been unemployed. One kid had an MBA. He went back to school. He's like, oh, maybe I can't find a job, so I'll go back to school for an MBA. And you know what J.P. Morgan offered him? A clerk job at a bank somewhere in Harlem. That's what the job he was offered. An MBA sitting there taking deposit slips in Harlem with an MBA. That's the job he was offered. Yeah. And then I got some other friends in the communications business. I got friends in the, uh, you know, who got laid off from Viacom, still can't find a job. But the economy's booming. Booming! Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Do you guys know anybody that's unemployed? But everything's fine. Now, I just, 
I don't know if I even said this already because I am in a, I haven't slept in four or five days. The puppy, I've been hanging out. And I just, I, I don't know. I'm just like a new baby. I can't, I'm all giddy. Ah, I can't, I can't sleep. But remember why we went down in August? It was the fear of the China slowdown, right? China was getting hammered, right? Remember that? And we were crashing along with them, right? You realize China's gotten a lot worse. I believe I saw something about they hit four. This is the worst losing streak they've had in four years. I don't know. There's some. I just saw a bunch of China headlines go by last night at two in the morning, and that just, it just dawned on me. I said, "Wait a second. If China's still bad, how come we bounced from August? Because wasn't that the reason we were going down? And where about the other reasons? Hey, here. I don't know." Hey, let me take this phone call. Hold on a second. Yes, can I call you back? No. All right, bye. So, what was the point I was making now? Oh, there you go. Got a phone call. OCD setting in. No idea what I was talking about. China slow down some bullshit. All right. Let's play a game. All right, I like playing this game every time the market starts going up and people are wondering why it's going up. Let's give us, let's start, let's try to name the last 50 reasons why we were supposed to be crashing and why gold and silver should be 3,000. Oh, by the way, ACAD, ACAD also, ACAD, A-C-A-D, F-E-Y-E. How about those last two stocks I gave you? You don't like the A-M-D, the F-E-Y-E? How about the ACAD now on the reversal from 2990? Remember that one? How about the FEYE reversing there at 13? Remember 1290 on the FEYE? How you feeling about that? Huh? How you feeling about that one? Huh? 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 How about the Qs when they broke 10680? Huh? Don't think. Don't think. That's why I'm like this. I started thinking, oh, the market's probably not gonna rally into the Memorial Day weekend. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? I guess it is. I guess it is. This is the move that I thought we would see Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. That's why they did it this week. Just to fuck me. So, oh, okay. So yeah, let's play the let's play the game. I'll start. I'll say SARS. You say, come on. Let's go. Let's go over the let's go over the reasons why the market should have gone. It still should be at four thousand. I say SARS. You say fiscal cliff. I say government shutdown. You say bird flu. Uh, I'll say Crimea. Crimea. You say Ukraine. I'll say North Korea. You say. Let's play the game. Ready? 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 Go. Come on. Let's see. All right. There you go. There you go. You say Cyprus. I say Greece. I say Portugal. You say... This works better if we had a call-in show. I say Portugal. You say Spain! That's the answer I was looking for, William. Thank you. So now I'll say... I'll say... Wait. What was the other country that was going to take us down? Cyprus was hilarious because I was actually short that night. I came in, and the market was gapped down, and I was like, ooh, why are we gapped down today? Well, Cyprus is defaulting on their loans. I didn't even know there was a country called Cyprus, and I immediately covered my shorts, thank God. Oh, all right. We forgot the big one. I, I'll say, <laughs> that's the biggest one of the other one. I'll say, I'll say Ebola. You say Ferguson, remember we were crashing because, you know, people were getting tased? Right, I say Ebola, you say Zika. You're playing the game now. You're playing the game. Congratulations, that's the answer I was looking for. I say interest rates, you say Brexit. You guys are catching on, you guys are catching on, right? You say sign flu, you say sign flu, swine flu, I'll say, what was the other one? There was other one. Bird flu, SARS, uh, Ebola. I'm stumped here. Doom, 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 doom. We already went through the bird flu. There was another one. There was another disease that was going to wipe us off the earth that you had to sell all your stocks. I forgot what it was. Oh, I don't know what it was. You see? Because none of it mattered. I'm still upset about the fiscal cliff. I was getting my ass kicked short in volatility. I was like, the volatility was spiking into the clothes, and I was looking for us. You know, some reality is set in. I got hammered that day. Fiscal cliff. Who the hell's fiscal? Fiscal cliff? Who's cliff? What happened to the fiscal cliff? I think we went over the fiscal cliff 
And still nothing happened because there was a bed of pillows waiting for us over the fiscal cliff to bounce off. Whee! Fiscal cliff! La 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 la! We hit, we hit the bottom of the fiscal cliff and we bounced up and then we said, bye bye I'm going to take this bird flu and I'm going to just snort a line of Ebola with you and, and short some volatility. How'd the Ebola work out, right? That was a real disease. That's a real disease and still that was overblown. Skin eating flesh virus spreading across the world. And that didn't matter either. And now you're wondering, why are you not wearing a shirt? It's very disturbing. You know, next time we see each other, I'm going to shave my chest. I'm, I think I'm going to do only shirtless videos, and I'm afraid my dog is sleeping, or I would have shown you the dog. So it's only shirtless videos, only bullish remarks. Market never goes down. Oh, there he goes again. Watch the market go down on Tuesday now that he keeps saying it's never going to go down. Let me just clarify that statement one more time. It may actually have a down day, but the 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 the, uh, the event of a market perpetually going down, where six months later we're lower, and then six months lower after that, I think those days are not coming until my dad and his friends who are you know, between 72 and 75, take their money out of equities and move them into triple tax leveraged new veins, real estate investment trusts, and that's it. Until that day happens, equities, 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 because none of this matters. It's not real. None of it matters. It's a, round, it's, it's a, it's a roller coaster, merry-go-round of bullshit. Why did WLL just bounce nine, from 979 to 1315 over the last couple of days. Has the company fundamentally changed for a 35% move in, in, in two weeks? No. No. They hit the level where the shorts give up. You start to buy and we go back higher. And why is FEYE moving again on Fridays? We used to love this stock on Fridays. Remember FEYE Fridays? Every Friday. Every Friday for like six months. FEYE is getting taken over. FEYE is getting taken over. Rip into the close. And then the best was the Monday, you'd have FEYE not get taken over, and you would sell it and short it, and it would go back down, and we'd wait for Friday. FEYE Friday, blah, 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 blah. Guess what? That was when the stock was in the 30s and the 40s. Look where it is now. Now it actually makes sense as a takeover. So I will declare right now, my three takeover candidates for 2016 to the year 2030. Giving myself a window there of, of chance of this happening. FEYE, Square, and Twitter. One, two, or all three of these stocks will be getting taken over sometime over the next 40 or 50 years. All right? You heard it here first. So 20 years from now, when you're lying on your deathbed and Twitter finally gets taken over at $4 a share from 20 cents... That fucking guy, Kenny, man, shit, he knew it. He knew it. Just like you idiots out there where the Dow's at 22,000 or 24,000, or fuck it, maybe it's at 30,000, and then it crashes down to like 25,000, you'll be like, I told you. I know it. You'll be out there. I told you we're going to crash. But at that point, we'll be at 30,000, and you guys that are continuously thinking that you're staying short this market, you're lying. You're lying or you don't have any money involved. Because trust me, I'm not even completely short. You know, I got the strangles and I'm feeling the pain. So if I was completely short, I would have covered already. I'm not going to sit here and watch this and add to it. What if we don't go back down? But here's the thing. If I'm wrong about everything and we actually start going down next week, which is kind of in the back of my head. Let me get it. Let me get it out of the back of my head there. All right. Now it's in the front of my head. Feels good. So here's the thing that might happen. Because we rallied this week, what normally would happen next... Oh, the Flocka. Yeah. The Flocka. I need some Flocka injected in make my skin fall off. Yeah, I heard about that drug. 
F-U-Y-E, we all got paid today, it doesn't matter. We could have fun now and make stupid videos and just have a good time. F-U-Y-E, F to the fucking Y-E, motherfucker. Ooh, reversals, kids, that's all you need. So what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? What was I just saying? Get it to the front of my head, I forgot now. See what happens? What was I just saying? Talk to me. I'm gonna just stop the video now because I don't even know what I was saying. Oh, right, the market. Because we went up this week, right? Because we went up this week, this is the week that I thought we would have next week because of the post 9-11, no terrorism, holiday weekend gap and go that we've been doing probably since 9-11. If you haven't noticed, if there's no terrorist attack or anything that awful happens over a holiday weekend, usually we gap up that Tuesday or whatever whatever the holiday weekend is, and we gap and we and we go. But we had that move Tuesday and Wednesday and, well, basically all week. So here's the setup, kids, if you're thinking about shorting stocks, because I am. I mean, I'm not going to just sit here and be completely blind to the fact that it's crazy to think we, we need a pullback. You know, this. I, I got one more point to make, but here's the thing. If we do gap up on Tuesday and start to fade that gap, fade that gap, if we start to fade that gap, that might be a good shorting opportunity because all the people that were smart enough and courageous enough and, yeah, smart and courageous is good enough, they're going to want to take profits. So if we do gap up, they might start taking profits. And if we go red, on Tuesday, after, after a gap up, after a gap up, sir, if we do gap up and we roll, that might be the time to start shorting stocks that day, mind you. it probably be a nice one-day event, possibly two. It's not going to start some downtrend for the rest of the year. It's not the end of the world. Even if the Dow was to give back 250 and the NASDAQ was down 85 on Tuesday on a reversal. And they'll be talking about it on CNBC. Oh, well, the Dow started with a great rally this morning, up 125. And I hate when they call it a rally when the market opens up $125. The market's in rally mode. No, it's not. It opened at 125. So basically it's in mode. It just gapped up there. And now we're just waiting to see what happens next. Well, the market started in rally mode, and then and an enormous reversal of fortune at around 10.30. We're trying to figure out the reasons, but we'll make one up. I don't know. Let's go. What's the reason for today? I don't know. Oh, uh, some analyst at J.P. Morgan Chase said something about something. Yeah, that, yeah that's good now. Let's make that the reason for the sell-off today. <laughs> so... If we do get that, I will be shorting the shit out of everything, especially the cues, because I'm looking for the pullback. If we get the pullback, I'm looking just for a dollar, dollar and a half maybe, maybe get the pullback to 108.50. Right now, my my target that I've raised now my stops on the cues. If we do break down under the 108.20 area, you got to be looking for that 107.50 area to get tested. And if 107.50 doesn't hold, you're going to look for 106.80. There's your moment of clarity. Remember those prices, kids. Remember those prices. Those are significant. They were significant on the way up. They were significant on the way down. And they will be significant again when we start testing them if we do pull back. Or we just go parabolic and go straight up for the next three and a half years, right? Maybe this is it. This time is different, right? So... There was one more point I wanted to make, but I don't remember because I have OCD. All right, because it's hard. I should take notes. I should take notes while I do this. I should. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't really remember what it was. No, I'm not even gonna tell people to come to the room anymore because if they haven't come yet, what's wrong with you people? I got, we're hanging out, we got 18 people hanging out on a Friday before Memorial Day weekend, which is big. Usually there's like three people hanging out, right? And what'd we do? We did one trade. Do you want to do one or two trades a day to make extra income? You want to live a life that only your friends and your family can imagine. 
You want to sit in your underwear, no shirt, every day, and try to make yourself a little bit of a living so your mom doesn't kick you out of the basement that you live in? You want to work? You want to work for yourself and not have to answer to anybody else? Well, all that can be possible. I'm telling you, I'm not even, I'm not talking about, uh, you know what, if you guys, if you guys don't, if you guys haven't sh shown up yet, I mean, I'm, even this week where I was out, off my tits like this, I'm still finding winners. We did one trade today and that's all I'm planning on doing uh, unless the market starts crashing. That's the only time I'm going to do something differently today. We did one trade, winner, winner, chicken dinner. They can't take the money away from us. Yeah, it would have been awesome if we bought the $16 calls on the FEYE when the stock was going green, but I wasn't quick enough, so I just bought the stock. See, that's the play, but I'm not going to talk about it. If you really, if you really want to be a part of what we're doing, you got to make that little effort. Uh, but, but I got to click on a button? Wait a minute. What's the link? I gotta type something into the computer and then hit send or enter to get to the room? That's way too confusing for me. And then I get there and you're just yelling about some stock and I don't understand. I came for two days and you were talking about fish and puppies. That's another thing. To... This guy called me, again, I'm going to throw another guy under the bus, because this is fun. He calls me, I've been dying to talk to you. I called you a couple of times, you never called me back. I give it one more shot, so I finally called the guy back, because I'm a lazy bastard. I was, usually I'm trading, at, or talking to people, and I get around to making phone calls, so I finally call him, right? This dude was so genuinely excited to talk to me, he's like, I can't believe in you make the phone calls. Don't you have a staff? <laughs> A staff! Yeah, I got a staff in my pants right here! I got a staff. A staff. <laughs> they hit the bid staff. It's like, it's like it's a real company. <laughs> so he's so excited. He's like, can you hang on a second? My son really loves you too. Can you say hi to him? And he puts his son on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, hey, how you, how you doing? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah it's Kenny from uh, Hit the Bid. Hey, what's up? Yeah, your dad said you were really excited to talk to me. Sounds like it. Because I don't, I don't hold back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I watch your videos on YouTube. All right, awesome, dude. Can you put your dad on the phone? Because cause you're kind of, you're putting me to sleep here, fella. But I'm glad that's, if that's as excited as you get, you'll never need sedatives, friend. But okay. So anyway, his dad comes to the room. He stays there for a couple of days. Sends me another email. And what happens? This dude, he called me three or four times, sent me four or five emails, got his son to call me, got his son on the phone. Where are you? Where are you? Since that day, you know, that was about two and a half months ago, I was on one of the most sickest runs of my life. That was right as we were buying the FS, the FCXs and, and, the, and, the, and the US Steels and all that stuff. Oh, brother. Anyway, all right. Well, again, people, you, you, you want to you learn how to do this, come and join the, the riffraff that I hang out with. And if you want documented proof, ask these people. Come to the room. Oh, by the way, one more time. For the guy with the Fitbit, still hasn't gone back to 30, asshole. Still hasn't gone back to 30. Oh, oh, and also the cues are way above 108.12 now, also, dickbag. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, 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 wait, 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 there was something else. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, UVXY still hasn't gone back to 30 or $40. And, and, and no, asswipe, we didn't lose money selling naked calls on UVXY, and now we're all out of them. And we made money. So here's a big suck it and a fuck it because you're a dick. And I know there's only like seven to ten of you guys left in cyberspace that bug me. But guess what? I've been right about everything and you're a dick still. So 
I guess I win. I'm a winner. <laughs> I'm a winner. I look at myself in the mirror every morning and say, you are a winner. Even though you had a lot more money at one point in your life and used to trade a lot more size, you're still a winner, Kenny. You still help people. And that's a good thing. You're going to heaven. All right. Have a nice day. Have a great weekend. And remember, if you're shooting fireworks, don't put the Roman candle up your ass the wrong direction. Because it is fun sticking a Roman candle in your ass and shooting them out your ass. But make sure that the fireballs are going out, not in your ass. All right? You learned something today.